This is Chris Wardolowski for the San Jose Earthquakes. You're watching Bay Area Sports Wrap. Questions for Commissioner Berman. Quiet group, huh? Your thoughts on this opening game for the Bay FC? It's incredible to be here and see all the excitement and enthusiasm for the team, to see the diversity of the community show up and support the players, and there's just an incredible amount of excitement. For me personally, this is sort of the first expansion deal that was consummated early when I started and saw it through from conceptualizing to planning to execution. And so it's just an incredible moment for me and personally and on behalf of the league, really excited to have Bay FC in the league. What have you learned from a league level about executing an expansion team? Yeah, I think um, it starts with leadership and a vision and people who are willing to be collaborative and work together. They obviously had a relatively short runway to get up and running, but they resourced the team appropriately and really galvanized the community in the right ways. And I think you see out there, you can feel it, even though the weather is not great, um, had some iffy moments, but the community showed up and I think there's an incredible future here. With the transfers this summer and then the record um, sales pending, uh, how would you describe this moment for the league? I think um, what what you're seeing happen, I think, is a collective recognition that investing in women's soccer is an investable business proposition. When you see the transfer fees that were paid across the globe, but I think a lot of the investment came from right here in Bay FC. And, the product on the pitch shows they have an incredible diversity of playing styles, people from different countries, and walking around here and seeing Nigerian national team jerseys around, and just an incredible representation of the global game that is right here in, in the Bay. How much is the finances even of the potential 16th team? I know you guys are looking at it for a few years from now or other teams in the future. How much is even, you know, the number that Bay SC came in at at 53 million? How different is that number already looking for the next team in that regard? Well, I think when I remember the press conference when Alan Waxman and the, the founding four were there and people were a bit shocked by the $53 million number. And I think they're looking pretty smart right now because just a year later, or a little bit less than a year later, we're seeing franchise values grow incrementally and exponentially over such a short period of time. And there's really no reason to think that that will slow down by, by any means because the business is really caught up to what we're all investing in. And I think our media deals are really the, the driving force behind that. When you know you walk by a restaurant, which I did today, and saw ESPN on, and there was the NWSL, the Kansas City Angel City game, and people were just watching it. Those are new fans who might not otherwise had the ability to discover the NWSL who are paying attention. And between them and ION and, and CBS and Amazon, I think we're really capturing a lot of new representation of people who wouldn't otherwise be paying attention to the NWSL. And where are you guys at, I guess, in the process of trying to find a 16th group? And would, would there be a timeline that people might expect an announcement on that? Yeah, so we've started the process. We actually officially launched post-championship, and we've been in a mutual due diligence process since then. Um, we have upwards of a dozen groups under NDA and yeah, we, we expect within, I would say by early Q4 to be in a position to be hopefully making a decision, but we're gonna make sure we make the right decision and not be held to any artificial timelines, but the process is going really well. Um, we're incredibly excited about the level of interest, but most importantly as was the case for team 14 when we brought the Bay in, the quality of ownership is really going to drive the decision, and we're incredibly excited about the people who are interested in Team 16. How about the significance of Women's Empowerment Month, Women's History Month in March, and having the, the debut on, on, in the, at the end of March? Yeah, so starting our season in the middle of March, I think um, definitely wasn't because of Women's History Month, but there's just been a recognition, I think, throughout this month between our league starting and what we're seeing in college basketball and women's basketball 
that women's sports, we've we've reached that inflection point. That turning point has happened, and it definitely isn't an isolated moment. This is a movement that is happening across our industry, and there are so many examples and illustrations of the fact that the turning point has happened, and Women's History Month is a great opportunity to reflect on that. The vice president actually invited a whole bunch of women in sport to her home last week. I don't know if everybody saw that on social. It was really an opportunity to celebrate that women's soccer and women's sports more broadly is really the tip of the spear, at redefining the value of women for society. And it was an incredible opportunity for those of us who have been working in the space for the last few years to come together and share ideas and best practices and support each other's successes. With, with the World Cup coming up, how do you be, how do you feel to be part of this culture of soccer? Yeah, well, I, I talked about this recently. I think uh, the world has been waiting for the United States to really embrace this global sport. And I think that moment has finally come. And I often say that for our sport, for women's soccer, it is one of the few sports that when you walk around the U.S. and if you ask random people to think of greatness in soccer, they think of women. So we're really excited about really having that as our solid foundation. And of course, bringing the world here for the World Cup in 2026 is going to be an incredible moment to expose all those global football fans to the NWSL. And we're super excited about that opportunity. And how about the, the how is the future for this league's growth is going to depend on the successfulness of this franchise and the Utah franchise? Yeah, well, expansion teams are really important, of course, to the success of the league. And so we saw with the last round of expansion what momentum was created by Angel City and San Diego. And so this is that next moment. And so seeing Utah sell out their first game last week, seeing Bay FC sell out this game, and just really supporting the way that they're building their fandom and their communities, I think is going to be a really important inflection point for us as we work towards the next round of expansion in 2026 with Boston and Team 16. Does this feel right, uh, this being in the Bay, considering the soccer history here? Well, I think you have to, when you think about that, you have to think of the founding four. Um, last night, I was fortunate to have dinner with Brandy Alley Danielle and Leslie, and this was really their vision. And so their vision of bringing women's professional soccer to the Bay Area, knowing the connectivity, not just with girls soccer, but in colleges around here and how incredibly supportive they knew the community would be. And so seeing them really revel in this moment, which has been a vision of theirs for many years, was incredibly excited. And I think it's clear that women's professional soccer belongs in the Bay Area. Take one more. Obviously, Bay FC has spent quite a bit on the roster as it is. There's opportunities with players who are maybe even more valuable than the league salary system allows them to afford right now. Are there discussions in play about potentially changing the league's rules to maybe even lower the salary cap or allow for more freedom of financial uh, opportunities for teams to pay whatever money that they can afford to go get the best players in the world? Yeah, I think... Um we're, we're really watching this very closely. Um, we made the decision, of course, from 2023 to 2024 to double our salary cap to 2.75 million. And because of that, we've seen an incredible influx of talent. I think we signed 21 players in the most recent transfer window. It is also important that we maintain competitive balance around the league. You look at, for example, Esther Gonzalez's comments post-championship when she was asked, what is it like coming off of the World Cup, playing for Spain, coming into the NWSL, having played in Europe, and she said playing in the NWSL is like playing in Champions League every single week. And we really want to maintain that competitiveness. And that means, for better or worse, that we have to create these limits on how much teams can spend so that we can distribute talent across the league and make sure that week in, week out, we have games that are one goal games and the game last night when there was a goal scored I think it was the 89th minute or something like that those are what really drives not just the fans to want to watch but for the top players to want to come here this is a sport where players expect to professionally develop and we know and are confident that the best players in the world can continue to excel and learn and grow in our league. Hi, right, Sharks Thank analyst you. Brett Hedekin for Bay Area Sports Wrap. Please give a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.